45 Drive sent a Stornator a little while back and I've been desperately trying to make some changes to the system. There isn't anything wrong with the system per se, it's a great enterprise server, but with that comes noise. The dual 1200 watt power supplies, along with the five heavy duty 120 millimeter fans and a high velocity cooler, are just a little bit louder than expected. Yes, I have a server room in my house, but it's not like I have concrete walls or anything. I reached out to 45 Drives and they sent me new fans and a new power supply. This is when I started thinking about other upgrades I could make while I have it open. I mean, Jeff from Craft Computing swapped out the CPU and added a terabyte of RAM. Jeff Gearling ripped the whole thing apart and connected a petabyte of storage to a Raspberry Pi. And Wendell from Level 1 Text created an offside backup to another Storinator server to back up the ZFS. How could I ever come close to anything like this? And that's when the wheels started turning. And that's when I decided to put RGB fans in my server. <laughs> I know, impressive, right? Oh wait, it's not what you think. It's not just simple RGB fans. I was able to find and hack a Zigbee controller that works with PC fans without relying on the motherboard's proprietary software, which is a good thing because this server motherboard doesn't have an ARGB controller anyways. It doesn't have the ports. I can then control these using any Zigbee hub and even automate them too. I also decided to swap out the CPU cooler that shipped with the server for a ginormous but quiet cooler. Over the last few days, this upgrade has taken many turns, from removing everything from the case, to finding a Zigbee controller that I could use, to finding compatible RGB fans, to figuring out how to power this controller inside of the server without a power adapter, to using a multimeter to find 12 volt power, to finding a quiet cooler that will work with an Intel Xeon CPU in a 4U server case. I had my work cut out for me. But first, a thanks to our sponsor, Micro Center. If you're thinking of building a new PC, you should look no further than Micro Center. If you've never been to a Micro Center before, you're missing out on seeing a huge selection of technology in person. They've got everything for custom PC builders from SSDs, to hard drives, to power supplies, to memory, to air and water cooling, to motherboards, to video cards, to processors, and more. It's your one-stop shop to totally customize your next PC build. Micro Center has the best selection and prices, whether you visit one of their 25 locations across the US, or if you decide to shop online. And don't worry, if it's your first time building a PC, they have lots of helpful and knowledgeable staff that are there to help you out. And after you build your PC, show it off and submit your build to the Build Showcase in the Micro Center community, and upon approval, receive a coupon for your next Micro Center in-store purchase. Also, Micro Center is giving you 25 off your next purchase of any AMD and Intel processor to all new customers, no purchase necessary, and is available in store only. So be sure to see the link in the description for details. I bet you're asking how loud the server is and if I really need to do this. Again, this isn't something you would care about if your server was in a data center, but this is in my home. I did a little testing with my watch and it measured around 68 decibels. I'm not really sure if that's loud, but it sounded like this. So the first thing I needed to do was take the server apart and swap out the dual 1200 watt power supplies. I got some help from you while doing this on a live stream. I learned really quickly that this was not going to be as easy as just taking out the power supply. Once this was out, I thought I could just start snipping all of the zip ties, but I had to end up removing the back of the enclosure. And to do that, I had to take out the motherboard. Geeky Rand was right at the beginning of the stream when he said it was going to be a 100% rebuild. Uh, Geeky Rand, so full rebuild. Pretty much, man, pretty much. Since 45 Drives had sent brand new fans, I decided to take those out as well, but that included taking out the housing too. Once everything was removed, I then took the motherboard out of the case and took the CPU cooler off the motherboard. This Intel Xeon 4210 along with the cooler is a beast and outside of it being a little bit loud, it's perfect. But I wanted something quieter and when I think of quiet fans, I naturally look for Noctua. I didn't think I was going to find a cooler that would fit on my Xeon along with fitting in my 4U case, but I ended up finding the Noctua NH-D9 which is made especially for my Intel CPU using the LGA3647 socket. Fan installation went flawlessly and I installed them using a pole configuration since these fans will be right behind the other fans 
and this will push the air into the fins. Next, I was trying to figure out how I could use RGB fans without pins on my motherboard and without software running on the server. I knew I wanted something more open than that, so I decided to start looking for Zigbee controllers that could run some fans. That's when I discovered this controller. This controller is the Gedeeld Zigbee 3.0 LED controller with four pins. It's used to control RGB strips, but it can control any four pin RGB lights. These were perfect to control my RGB fans, except for the power connector, but we'll figure that out in a second. For fans, I went with these Cooler Master Sickle Flow 120 millimeter RGB fans. The reason I went with these is because I needed RGB and not ARGB like many of the other fans that are out there. These are PWM and move plenty of air, are quiet, and are super duper affordable. After installing three RGB fans in the front, I considered not using RGB fans for the second row, but then I thought, um, <laughs> this is gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> I need more RGB. So I installed three more RGB fans behind it. Now was the challenging part, wiring up the controller to the PSU or the motherboard. Remember, I didn't want to use external power. I wanted to pull the power from within the case if possible. That's when I realized that I could probably pull 12 volts from the Molex and feed it into this controller. So I modified a Molex connector to connect to a 2.5 millimeter barrel plug I think that's what you call them. I had a ton of these left over from a Raspberry Pi project. Once I wired it up and connected it, the fans would turn, but not light up. This meant that the controller was not actually getting enough power. I tossed this question out on Discord and iLude told me to use a multimeter and check it. Thanks iLude. <laughs> Sure enough, when I checked the voltage, I was only getting 5 volts. I wasn't sure how this was possible since I studied this diagram that I found on the internet. And you see, it says right there, oh, the red cable is 5 volts and the yellow cable is 12 volts. So then, I created another Molex connector, this time with the yellow cable. I then used these shrink wraps to make it a little more permanent. I don't have a heat gun, so I used a lighter. I'm sure there are better ways, but I tested this with my multimeter and now I'm getting 12 volt. This was great news because now I could light up and power both sets of fans. Next was testing the controller. Remember that this is a Zigbee controller, which means it can work with any Zigbee hub like Smart Things or even my Philips Hue hub. So I decided to give it a try. I powered it on, then opened up the app and searched for new devices. After a minute, it was able to connect to the device. Now note, it's going to treat this like one big light bulb because it's not ARGB, meaning that each individual light is not addressable but it's totally fine with me. Once I have this connected to my Hue Hub, I can then change the colors of the fans as well as change the brightness all from the app. This green light would look really cool for the Craftinator. <coughs> Craft computing. <coughs> but anyways, I know what you're thinking. Why put RGB fans in a server to begin with? Well, why not? It's not like it doesn't have a beautiful faceplate already. It just needs a little more flair. And since it's now integrated with my Hue Hub, I can automate it with code, HomeKit, or even Home Assistant. This is going to be perfect because I already have home automation in my server room that turns on the lights when I enter via motion. And then it turns all the lights off when there's no motion for five minutes which means that my server fans won't stay on 24 seven. And how loud are these server fans now? Well, remember when we tested at the beginning with the old fans? It was reading about 68 decibels. Well, here it is now. <laughs> 56 decibels, that's almost a 20% reduction in noise, not to mention the quality of the sound. Rather than it being a high pitched whine, it's now a low hum, <laughs> which I'm fine with, and so is my wife. So what's next for this server? Well, I need to put it in my rack, but it doesn't fit into my existing server rack. However, <laughs> I just received a brand new one that you've probably never seen before, and I'm super excited to build it. So be sure you're subscribed to see my new build and my new rack with lots of other goodies. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Like, no joke, I want to buy one, absolutely. I, I, I want to buy one for a couple of reasons. One, I'm going to support Linus and LTT. Like, I like Linus, I like LTT as a brand. I want that channel to stick around. Even if people complain about the price of the screwdriver, hey, I want, I want Linus in the future. 
you know, and, and that's one way I, I'd like to support them. Screwdriver can be, you know, great, number one, number two, anything. I, I, but for me, it, it means supporting a fellow creator. So absolutely, I want to buy one. But I think the only colors that they have right now are, are, are the uh, LTT branded ones, the, the orange and black. Nothing against orange and black, but I want a different color. <laughs>